the January 20th Metropolitan Area Planning Commission meeting. Do we have our announcements, please? Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The Planning Commission's and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the Planning Department. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda is roll call. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Bill Johnson. Here. Fox. McKay. Green. Duell. Mr. Duell. Okay. Mr. Blick. We have received information that he was going to call in, so I'll double check again. Mr. Blick? Here. 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 Okay. Thank you. Nix? Here. Foster? Here. Warren indicated he was going to be absent. Joe Johnson? Here. Miles? Here. Hartman? Florence? Here. Show 11 members present. Very good. Okay, the first, second, next item on the agenda will be the approval of MAPC meeting minutes of January 6th. Second. I got a motion to approve by Mr. Hartman, second by Mr. Green. Any discussion? Mr. McKay would be abstained from this vote. And Mr. Johnson. And Joe Johnson. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there aye. Anybody, anybody opposed? That would Abstain. be nine.
Okay, now we're going to go through the list of items we got in front of us, and we can see if we can take them on consent or if we're going to hear them. First items, 2.1, subdivision 2021-00057. This was deferred uh, from the January 6th meeting. Uh, and also with this case, there will be a BZA case that we will hear if this is approved. Is that correct? Sir, one uh, correction on that one. That was... Uh... That case with the BZA one is actually 4.1. It's a conditional use case. It's connected to this case. Connected to, it is connected to the BZA case. Okay. Is anybody on the commission want to hear item 2.1? Any commi commissioners virtual, do they want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? How about anybody virtual would want to hear this case? Take that on consent. The next one is subdivision 2021-00058, a one-step final plat. It's uh, located on south of East 31st Street South and west of Webb Road. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Anybody virtual commissioners want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take that on consent. Next one is uh, 2.3, subdivision 2021-00063, one-step final plat, Turkey Creek 5th edition. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about the commissioner virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Next one's 2.4, subdivision 2021, 0064, one step final plat. Uh, anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commission members that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Seeing now, we can take that on consent. Next one's 2.5, subdivision 2021 0065 one-step final plat, Fox Run 2nd edition. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any of the commissioners or virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We'll take that on consent. And I see Mr. Dole just arrived. Okay. Next one's 2.6. Subdivision 2021-00066. Armstrong Estates, second edition. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take it on consent. Next one's 2.7, subdivision 2021-00067, McDowell edition. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about the commissioner of the virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual? Thing then we'll take that on consent. What's the pleasure of the commission on 2.1 through 2.7? Move to approve items uh, 2.1 through 2.7. Okay. Got a motion I'll by Miss Miles, second by Mr. Hartman. I'll, 
Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, the next one is vacation case 2021 0 49 um, vacate a platted alley on um, East Kellogg on the south side of Lewis Street between Laura and Patty. This was deferred from uh, December 9th. Does anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about any of the commissioners that virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? How about anybody virtual? We can take that item on consent. And item 3.2 has been deferred till February 17th. Mr. So, Chairman, I move to be approved item 3.1. Got a motion to approve by Mr. Green, second by. Second. Ms. Miles, no. any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody opposed? Now the public hearings cases. Uh, first one has to do with uh, conditional use 2021 0062. Uh, anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about the commission members that are virtual want to hear this case? Yeah, I do. I do. Who's Mr. Mr. Florence? Okay, we'll hear that case. And the next one's 4.2 conditional 2021 0065. Well, I would like to hear 4.1 too as well. I'm not sure the public. What was that now? It was a speaker, somebody virtual that wanted to hear it. Okay. 4.1 also. We're going to hear that case. Okay. Thank you. Now we're on conditional 2021 0065. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Okay, we're going to hear 4.2. Next one's condition use 2021 0066. Uh, we will hear that case because staff is recommend denial. Is that correct? Four point four. Zoning 2021 0061. Uh, from SF5 to TF3. 127 South Millwood. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about the commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual? We'll take that. I would. Oh, sorry. I'd like to hear it. Okay, we're going to hear 4.4. Next zoning 2021 0062 with a CUP 2021 0070. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber want to hear this case? Okay, we're going to hear that. 4.6 zoning case 2021 0063 um, from light industrial to SF5. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Anybody virtual on commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We'll take that one on consent. Next one is zoning 
2021-00064. Again, TF3 to MF18. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any of the commissioners of Versa want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chamber want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We can take that on consent. Second. Motion made by Ms. Fox, uh, second by Ms. Mr. Nix. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? I guess I'm going to ask staff, do we go ahead and go through the cases and then go to the BZA after all that's over? Yes, sir. I'd, I'd recommend since uh, we have a conditional use case that is associated with one of the BZA cases, uh, if the conditional use case is not approved, then there's really no need to necessarily for the BZA case to be considered. But because of that order of events, uh, we're recommending that you hear the BZA items after you go through the public agenda items. I heard part of that. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. We are uh, because of the relationship between the conditional use case and one of the BZA cases. We are recommending that you take the BZA cases after you've considered and uh, made and taken action on the public hearing items. Once the once the planning commission meeting's over, we'll go to the BZA. Uh, yes, sir. You'll recess and go into the BZA. Yes, sir. So we will hear case. Four point. Four point one. Good afternoon, Philip Ziebenbergen with Planning Staff. Uh, conditional use twenty twenty one sixty two is a conditional use request for Group Residence Limited at a property address twenty nine oh nine East Shady Brook, which is southwest of the intersection of twenty first and Hillside. The property is zoned TF three, and Group Residence Limited is permitted by conditional use in TF three. The applicant is requesting to operate a children's home with up to five youth boys ages 12 to 15, in addition to two staff members in this facility. Uh, Group Residence Limited allows six to 15 persons who are not considered a family by the code um, to reside at a facility. Typical uses for those are like <coughs> fraternity houses, sorority houses, children's homes, things of that nature. This would more qualify like the children's homes, I as I explained. The house was built in 1942 and was originally a duplex. It's been converted to a single family dwelling. It has four bedrooms and two bathrooms. It was not developed, if you go to the aerial, it was not developed with a driveway or a garage. And the this is the case that has the BZA associated with it um, because we're asking for a parking reduction from four spaces to zero. We'll cover that with the BZA case. Um, the house is situated such that there's really not even space for a driveway to actually get even around the side of the house um, to even access the back. With the BZA case, we'll discuss that drive on the rear of the property. Um, short story on that one is legal access to that was inconclusive. There's no, as I could find, no recorded documents as to how this property could have legal access to use that drive. Um, it's questionable whether or not the person who actually uses it has legal access to, but that's a different story. So, as it stands now, the conditional use would require four parking spaces. It's one per bedroom. They are asking for the parking reduction. That's why we have to hear this case first, um, because if the conditional use is approved, then we would consider reducing the parking on it. Properties to the north, east, and west are TF3, two-family residential, built with single-family homes. Uh, several of them were also converted duplexes. Um, Several of them have driveways and garages, so this one actually is a unique property um, in the area. Uh, property to the south is single-family residential, um, developed with a single-family home and the detached garage that you can see uh, on the property. Staff is recommending approval, uh, subject to the conditions in the staff report, uh, which limit the property to a maximum of seven residences, five needing assistance, and two staff members. Um, the management of facilities shall comply with all licensing and regulations of the Department of D Children and Families. 
Um, there's a provision about um, the sign code being those permitted under TF3, and then it, all the signs be in compliance with all state, federal, and local regulations. It is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The community investment investments plan identifies the area as appropriate for residential uses. Group residence is permitted in residential zoning by conditional use. It's in conformance with the Wichita Places for People plan. Uh, strategy number five says to provide a dense, uh, diversity of housing options to attract new residents to allow existing residents to remain in the ECA. And strategy six encourages infill redevelopment with uses that are contextual to the environment in which it's occurring. Um, typically, they like to have these homes in residential areas to promote um, a residential environment for the children in foster care. Current condition <coughs> is by the Wichita Place Approvable Plan is that it's an area of opportunity, which um, wants to target um, specific investment into the area and being able to rehab this house and actually occupy the house would be uh, an example of private investment into the area. Uh, it is part of the 21st Street North Corridor Revitalization Plan, which is actually more of a transportation plan for 21st Street. However, it did cover about a block or two in either direction. The plan does identify the area as appropriate for residential uses. So even though it's targeted toward 21st Street, it did include this property. So we did a review of that as well. Um, I have heard some feedback this morning. I believe uh, Mr. Marcus Williams is online. He was the gentleman who spoke earlier in addition to Mr. Florence, who wanted to hear this case. Um, I will let him have his time when it comes to the public comment to provide his concerns. It was heard by the District Advisory Board 1 on Tuesday. They approved it 4 to 1. I believe their general concern was there are other locations in District 1 that have uh, clusters of group homes and group residences. This is not that location. Um, they also had a concern about the uh, possible parking reduction. They don't provide recommendation to BZA cases. It only is the Board of Zoning Appeals who renders um, a, a, an approval or denial on BZA cases. But knowing that they go hand in hand, um, they were basically saying if the conditional use is approved, they would like to see some level of off-street parking, but we'll cover that with the BZA case. Um, we can go through the site pictures. Um, if we just flip through the slides here real quickly. Uh, land use plan showing residential development. Next picture. This is the site plan. You can see where the house is and there's really no space for a drive. Next picture. Uh, floor plan showing the bedrooms and the layout of the house. Next picture. This is looking at the house. You can see as a walkway from the street to the house but no driveway or garage. Next picture. This is looking to the northeast across the street. Next picture. Looking to the southeast next door. Next picture. Looking to the southwest. Next picture. Looking at the houses across the street to the northwest. And I believe the last picture is on the next street over. So we're now looking kind of towards the rear of the property. This chimney right here is the subject site. This is the drive that's in question that um, couldn't find any legal access to it as it's traversing other people's lot lines and no recorded documents of providing access. It's not a platted alley. There is a um, sewer easement there that generally follows the path that this drive does, but it's not a platted alley, so it's not right of way for the public. Um, don't know the history of the use and why it started being there, but in terms of legal access to say, well, they can get to the rear of their property, that's at best in question. So with that, I can stand for any questions. Any questions? Yeah, Philip. Um, is, is there any, could you refresh my memory, is there any screening requirement between TF3 and SF5? There is not. No, no and screening. the conditional use would not require it either. Okay. Um, and I guess my second question would be, um, what is the front setback for TF3? It's 25 feet, and the house is built at the setback line. Um, okay. The property to the west on this lot right here has a BZA, has a variance approved for it to allow parking in the setback when they built the driveway. Um, the, basically, if there was a driveway built and parking would be 
allowed in front of the house, it would be in the setback, which is prohibited in TF3. That's something we're going to have to cover in the BZA case on whether or not the Board of Zoning Appeals, if they require a parking requirement, can also allow it in the front setback within the same request when that request wasn't made. But that's for the BZA case. And yeah, they, they, they're built right on the 25-foot line, just like the house next to them. So if there is any parking in front, it would be in the front setback. Yeah, because it appears as though the uh, actually the two properties to the east of of this uh, of the subject property both have drives yep. and do have uh, parking uh, yep. permitted there. So, but I realize that that is the BZA conversation. Which Correct. Have later, this is the is a group residence appropriate land use for this location. Right. Thank you. Any other questions, Philip? <clears throat> That was my concern a little about the parking, and we can address that during the meeting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Okay. Uh, applicant or agent? I have not seen them online. Um, is a uh, Mr. Zachary Bland <coughs> online, or a Sandy Bland? does not appear that they are present. Is there anybody in the chamber who wants to speak on this item? Is there anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Uh, yes, I would like to. Uh, please give me your name and address, and you got three minutes. Uh, my name is uh, Marcus Williams. I have uh, two properties, uh, I guess it would be to the east of there, 2921 East Shady Brook and 2923 Shady Brook. Uh, there would be uh, one, I guess, two places down from uh, the group home. Uh, have an uh, elderly uh, person lived, uh, lives in one of the uh, properties for 15 years, uh, which I'm highly concerned with a group home uh, going there uh, uh, in this that area, uh, especially that close to an uh, older lady. Um, she's uh, aware of it. She's very, very concerned of the use of that property uh, for um, for that because uh, group homes generally, unfortunately, bring a different type of, um, I'll just say, uh, clientele, personnel, um, uh, child, so forth um, to that particular area. Also, she's concerned about all the parking uh, congestion and so forth, uh, that it would bring, um, there, we have driveways for them there, but she's concerned about the, the parking and the congestion on the, uh, the street and people want to, uh, park in front of our, uh, our, uh, our duplex, uh, as well, because they don't have parking, uh, parking there, uh, uh sufficient for, for them. Uh, and then, um, so I am concerned about it. Um, we are prepared to put in a uh, a um, written statement uh, to the fact that we're we're not uh, we're opposed to it uh, going uh, going there. Anything else, Mr. Williams? No. Is there any questions of the speaker from the commission? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody else virtual? Bring it back to the commission uh, since the applicant or agent wasn't here. It, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, um, something that's in the staff report, both with this, but also more explained in the BZA staff report about parking is that the boys are ages 12 to 15. They are not able to drive by age and would not own their own vehicles. Um, the group the group residents would have a maximum of three vehicles. There would be two, one for each staff person, and then they actually have a, um, a car or more like a van if they needed to, you know, take the kids with them somewhere. They would have like a staff car that's just present all the time. Um, something the BZA staff report uh, mentions 
is the amount of street parking availability in front of their property as well as the property to the west that's along the side yard of the house that faces um, Maple Brook, whatever that, um, Maple Wood. Um, the property in question has 64 feet of frontage. Uh, parking standards for parallel parking um, state 22 feet per vehicle to allow for maneuverability. So they have two feet shy of the standard, which is probably something that can be called in the question in terms of do you need at least 66 feet, but having 64 feet just in front of their property, not to mention the property to the west um, that's along the side. So in terms of um, three vehicles being parked there, they have su sufficient space in front of theirs. Um, regarding visitations, they said most visitations are off-site. Um, they usually, the, the children usually go to their parent or guardian um, for visitation. If they do come on-site, they're scheduled. Um, they control that. They're not just drop-ins, so they would likely be able to control the number of vehicles that are in addition to their staff vehicles um, at any given time based on the fact that they would have appointment visitations if it actually happens on-site at all. What's the question? Mr. Phil, do you know if these kids, are, are they wards of the court? Or are they taken I believe out of homes? Are children. they foster kids? I believe they're foster children. And this is a placement through uh, DCF is my understanding. So they would like obviously foster be home. in high school or something. They'll have to get them back and forth to school, right? Where they either would probably be bused through the school system, um, depending on which school they're going to, and if they qualify for transportation based on distance. If not, like I said, they have a facility vehicle that they would likely use to transport the kids um, to where they needed to go. Much pleasure, the board. I move that we approve per staff comment. I'll second that. Second. Got a motion to approve by Mr. Question. Green, second by Ms. Miles. Any discussion? Question. All in favor, say no. Mr. Dill has a question. Go ahead. Uh, so it's my understanding that the applicant uh, nor the agent are present. Uh, haven't we been following a policy if they don't show up that we defer these? Uh, does the staff uh, inform these people that they need to be here when their case is being discussed? Philip, could you explain uh, the efforts we've made to notify? Yeah, the they do receive the notification of the date, time, and location of these. Um, staff does coordinate with them through the application process um, about the meeting. Um, I personally did not follow up with the gentleman today. They seemed fairly involved in the process, and I'm actually kind of surprised they're not here. It's not a written policy. Um, it's just been more of a practice in the past. Some cases we've heard didn't have the applicant, and we went ahead and dealt with them and some we did defer. But we do have a motion on the floor. Well, okay, that's fine. I just wanted an explanation and, and I will uh, go along with the, uh, the will of the uh, commission. But uh, I personally think that uh, if uh, we uh, inform people that they need to be here, that they ought to be here if we can hear the cases. That's all I've got to say. I I'd like, I'd like to chime in with Bob. I mean, we've talked about this numerous times, particularly in subdivision. And I don't, I don't know what it says when we inform these people that, that whether they should be here, whether they shouldn't be here. But we've talked about changing the wording of that, I think, haven't we? Have we not to make it a little clearer that they need to be here or not? Or we just talked around it? I mean, we, this comes up often. I think he's asking if we changed wording in our notices to make it very clear that they need to be at this meeting. I don't believe that we've made any effort to make any changes. I mean, we certainly are open to looking at that if we think that there's better language to include. Well, but we wouldn't be having this conversation if we could make it a little clearer, perhaps. I suppose. Just saying. I'm going along with it as well. I'm just, I'm just wondering why this has to come up as often as it does. I think. One of the uh, one of the concerns when this is brought up, um, if we make changes to the, their request, um, that's 
when we then uh, look at deferring an, an item so that they are at least aware that either it's been approved or it's not been approved, but there are changes that are coming. And if they continue to want to have their uh, item heard and or request a conversation about any changes. Yes, sir. I would, I would add to that and just say that if in the case that you're looking at a denial or as Commissioner Green has indicated, a, a change in terms of the approval and the conditions that it would impose. I know that legal has counseled that in that case, there probably should be a deferral so that the applicant has an opportunity to comment on what's being proposed, whether it's a denial or change. Any other discussion? We got a motion to approve for staff comments. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody? Aye. Anybody opposed? Yes. I oppose it. Mr. Floyd. I'll be opposed Mr. also, Joe. So Mr. we have Carol. that as eleven one then. Yeah. Two. Next item is four point two conditional use twenty twenty one triple zero sixty five. Staff, go ahead. Yeah, I think, good afternoon, I think we got Matt virtual. Yeah, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, this is Matt Williams for planning staff virtual today. Uh, this is a request for a conditional use to allow a nightclub in the city at 3906 East 13th Street. Uh, the subject site is developed with a multi-tenant commercial building built in 1950 and a parking lot. Uh, the applicant intends to operate a nightclub in the city in the portion of the building that previously housed Cedar Saloon and that's denoted on the site plan, and I'll show that here in just a minute. The conditional use is required due to the proximity of residential zoning, just 170 feet to the west. Uh, this proposed conditional use would permit outdoor service of food and drink as an accessory operation of the establishment, although we are recommending that a condition of approval be that no outdoor entertainment or speakers be permitted. Uh, parking for the multi-tenant commercial building is located in front of the building and there appears to be roughly 30 parking spaces. The parking standard for the nightclub in the city is one space for every two occupants. Uh, this could be an issue uh, depending on what other uses are active in the building. Um, I think that this will be handled at licensing or uh, you know, if they take any building permits out for construction at the property it would be handled at that time. Uh, due to the existing property being developed for commercial uses, screening is required along the west property line adjacent to the residential zoning, and an existing wooden fence does serve as a screening. Um, to the east, there is more commercial space. Uh, south of this is the McDonald Golf Course. Uh, to the west, there is the Redbud Trail and then residential, and to the north is some vacant property. Uh, the requested conditional use would allow the property to be in, continue to be in conformance with our plans and policies. Uh, Dad heard this case on Tuesday night and they did vote to deny the case five to zero. Um, there were concerns about the lack of outreach and the details provided by the applicant. Um, there were also concerns expressed about other violent nightclubs of the past in this area and just worries about uh, keeping the area safe space. Uh, staff does recommend a Approval of the request subject, subject to the conditions in your staff report, um, including that outdoor entertainment is uh, not allowed and outdoor speakers are not allowed. Uh, go, we can go through these photos real quick if you go to the next slide. Here's just an aerial view. You can see that vacant property to the north and then the residential just on the, the far left side of, your, uh, of the photo. Next slide. Here's the future growth concept plan showing it as a, a mix of commercial. Next slide. Here's the site plan and you'll be able to see the space that's marked as the Cedar Saloon there. That's uh, the location that's been identified for this nightclub in the city. Next slide. Here's some photos. This is uh, looking to the north. Next slide. This is the commercial uh, properties to the east. Next slide. 
the vacant property to the north. Next slide. The golf course to the south. Next slide. This is the red bud trail and the screening fence there. Um, this is just to the west of the property. Next slide. And here's the residential just to the west. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on this case. I've got a question. Is the Matt, is the entire building under one ownership? Uh, yes, it seems like the property is under the, the ownership of one person. I'm not sure, you know, I would assume that each of the spaces is owned by one person, yeah. Mr. Green? Yeah, Matt, um, back in the day, there was a, a bar that was on the uh, north side of that building on the east side of Vesta. Is there still a... a establishment there or is that moved out are you are you talking about this building or the building to the east of vesta the the building on the uh east side of vesta and the, okay. the north the north part of that used to be a, a bar in there is is there yeah. still a, is there still a bar to, there or, or is that something else now when I went to take photos, it, it does look like there's a sign up for a bar there. Um, there's not a past conditional use case on that property though for uh, nightclub in the city. Okay. I know the the west end of of this site, the the west end of that building, it was a, a had, was a bar back when I was in college. So. Any other questions? Matt, any other questions of Matt? Thank you, Matt. Uh, applicant or agent, please. Unfortunately, you know, the applicant was not at the DAB meeting, and I don't see the applicant online unless Stanley Davis. Uh, he's here present, uh, I believe. I believe he's oh, here. he is, okay. You made it. Hello, how you doing? Give us your name and address, please. Stanley J. Davis, 2875 Newport Street, Denver, Colorado. <clears throat> and you're the applicant, so we got 10 minutes. Yes, sir. You know. Go ahead. Um, like I said, uh, I'm living in Denver. I've been uh, gone from here about 40 some years. Come back home, you know. I always go by the building and see it was just horrible. So I said, I want to clean it up for my neighborhood. I bought a uh, restaurant in Denver, I did the same thing. So since I've been, uh, I bought it about three years ago, I've been trying to improve it. If y'all remember, it used to be purple, yellow, green, blue, all kind of colors, you know. But like I said, I'm putting money into it and trying to get it established. And you're agreeable with staff comments? Pardon me? You're agreeable with staff comments? I didn't get the last part of it. Do you agree with what the staff has recommended? And what was that? That? Uh, have somebody help you here. Yeah, our the staff recommendation is approval uh, of the conditional use uh, with the uh, outdoor entertainment being prohibited and no outdoor speakers. Okay, no outdoor speakers and stuff like that. Yes, I agree. Isn't it limited to a capacity of 60? Yeah, about that. Now, it used to have a... Uh, it had a, another side to it. And uh, they closed it off for uh, storage. And eventually, I would like to open that too. But right now it's only about 60. 60 or 16? Please. 60. 60? Any other questions? Applicant. Ms. Fox? I have a question. The reason a conditional use is needed is because of the proximity of residential area. 
just across the Redbud Trail. And the Redbud Trail also has, you know, pedestrian and bicycle mm, right, traffic, right, right. etc. Yes, ma'am. Um, recognizing the concerns expressed at the DAB, can you tell me, like, how you'll manage the the particular property? For example, will there be security present at all times? Um, how will you control the number of persons in that uh, establishment? Um, what are your plans to... Well, like it has a privacy fence on the side of it, on the west side of it, and that goes down uh, all the way past my property. And uh, I have to keep that maintained and stuff. And uh, as far as security right now, there's nothing open but a barbershop and a uh, uh, health place. And uh, if I would additionally need some security or something, I would uh, provide it or whatever. So when I get to that bridge, I have to you know, address it. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody in the commission chamber here want to speak on this item? Anybody on the, in the commission chamber want to speak on this item? How about anybody virtual? Yes. Give us your name and address, please. Levanta Williams, 3928 Vesta Drive, 7208. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I do appreciate the things that Mr. Davis has done uh, with the strip mall there. However, as we look at an influx of people coming in for this particular club, the people that are coming in have all different varieties of enjoyment and some of them are not good. And so our community then would also be looking at an influx of crime and that is the opposition that we have, is the noise and the crime, for one. I'm hearing that there are 30 spaces or there are 60 spaces for parking. Which is it? Uh, I heard originally that it was 30, and I know that that is still not enough, and that we would have uh, an increase of cars that are parked on our streets. And that is another opposition that we have. What are the days of operation? Is it every day? Is it Friday and Saturday? And what are the hours of operation? Even though we may not be less than 200 feet from this uh, facility, you can hear the music and the noise all the way down the block. So yes, we would have a problem with that, especially if it's until two o'clock in the morning. I wish that we had had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Davis as a neighborhood association or as a community. What is the age of this nightclub? Is it going to be 18, 19, 20 and up? What is the age? Again, we have people who have different ideas on how to have fun. We're looking at trash. We're looking at noise. We're looking at the hours of operation that are important to us. Security is very important to us. Security has to be there. That has to be a step. Because even when security is there, for instance, downtown, we put a person out of a nightclub downtown, he had an opportunity then to go and receive his weapon and come back, and we lost a life even there because security just put him out of the door. Security is so, so important in any nightclub. And then we also ask the respect of the neighborhood and of the community. You know, during my time on council, when Quick Trip left, that was one of the things that we asked Quick Trip to consider, is not a nightclub and not a payday lending facility. We now have a brand new bank on that corner at 13th and Oliver. When Walmart left, we asked that it not become a nightclub or a payday lending facility. We now have a furniture, uh, furniture store that is there. We really want things that will uplift the community and not, uh, not oppress it. The bike path, tremendous asset. Many, many bikers use that particular area. That Ms. is so Ms. important. Ms. Williams, oh, I'm sorry. your yes. time's up. Do you need any additional time? 
if you could just give me about 30 minutes, I mean, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably go for 30 I'll, minutes. But I'll, 30 grant, minutes. I'll grant you one minute. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, but those are the things that we're looking at. We're looking at a, a, a neighborhood and a community that is elderly. I'm not saying I'm elderly, but <laughs> we do have seniors that live on our block. And it's our responsibility to make sure that those seniors are not afraid in where they live. We have a very quiet community, actually. Uh, and so that's very important. We just had a home health person say, well, it's very quiet here. Yes, and we'd like to keep it that way. Somebody mentioned to the east of that facility, when that first opened, uh, we did sit down and talk. We talked about the age of the people that would be there. We talked about the uses that would be there. As a neighborhood, he has a sign there right now that says, respect the community and respect the neighborhood. So that's all we're asking for. When years ago, I did have many, many meetings with neighborhood nightclub uh, patrons and neighborhoods and nightclubs do not mix well because bullets and violence have no direction. So we're just asking you to please not pass this. Let us sit down and have more further uh, conversation. But right now, this community is opposed Ms. to the Williams, nightclub. Ms. Williams, thank you. I'm done. Thank any, you. Any questions of Ms. Williams from the commission? So I just want to clarify, uh, Ms. Williams, that the applicant was not at the DAB and the DAB was 100% opposed to this action. Yes. Yes. I attended the DAB. Any other questions of Ms. Williams? Thank you. Is there anybody Thank else you. virtual that wants to speak on this item? Uh, seeing none, uh, the applicant has two minutes for rebuttal, if you like. <coughs> like I said uh, before, I've been watching the uh, facilities for the last 20 years. It's been closed most of that time that I've seen it. And like I said, it was just getting tore down, dilapidated, and everything else. So I just want to go in there and up, 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 bring it up. Uh, like I said, if we have to worry about security, I'm going to definitely worry about security. I'm 65 years old. will be March 26. I'm not trying to have a club with young kids and all that game banging and all that stuff. Uh, like I said, I live in Denver. I have dealt with young men in games and stuff like that. I have helped with them. So like I said, we're not trying to get a big club going or anything like that. Just a small family bar. Any questions? Could you, sir, could you speak to the question that was asked by the speaker? Which one? Uh, the hours of operation, the oh. days of operation, the client, the age of the clientele you anticipate well, or your... I still live in Denver. I'm not willing to move back to Wichita yet. So it would be on a, a limited basis as far as uh, probably I would be till 2 o'clock like most clubs. But uh, as far as uh, anything else, uh, for, I'm not trying to, um, what else was the other question you asked me? Days and hours of oh. operation and age of clientele. Like I said, I'm 65. So I would, of the client, the people who would come right, to your that's, that's, bar, you'd, you'd be a a 21 and over? My or? age people. Not any young kids or anything like that. I don't, definitely don't want that. And uh, like I say, hours be like, uh, like I said, to, and days a week, I'm not really sure. I can't give you because I'm not actually in Wichita yet. I live both places. But, but, uh, I've been stuck here three weeks, I mean three months trying to get home, my transmission broke. And so, like I say, until I really find out or open it, I don't know if I want to open it, but I just want to have the opportunity to put like a, with a as a karaoke, I mean, a tavern, there's no uh, live music, there's no karaoke, there's so many restrictions as a tavern. And I'm just trying to get it open where I, I have options or somebody want to come rent it out 
they wanted to put a daiquiri bar in there, they could do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Yeah, just one. So, Mr. Davis, are, are you seeing this more as a as a a bar or a nightclub, or are you seeing this more as as an entertainment venue? Well, I mean, uh, talking to Tina Henry, she said, you know, you're limited with uh, what you have right now, and so she said, well, it might be best to try and rezone it or whatever. And I talked to her like three years ago, so I, I mean, the, this has been in the process that long. So I'm just just trying to dress stuff as I get to it. But it's not going to be an everyday thing for sure. And if I got to come back here and move right now, I ain't what I'm trying to do. So it'll be limited. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Bring it back. Do I get a rebuttal? <laughs> do I get one minute? No, no, no. Your time's okay. up. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, bring it back to the commission. What's the pleasure of the board? I move to deny. Second, Mr. Blick. Any discussion on that? I, I guess, <clears throat> I think initially with it, I realized I really didn't have a problem with it becoming a bar because I mean I know it's been a bar in the past, um, but I'm getting the impression that this isn't what Mr. Davis is really asking for. I think he's asking more for an, an entertainment venue, and in order to have all of the uh, options that would be available to. Uh, opening up an entertainment venue, he's having to open it up as a nightclub in the city where I I don't get the impression that he's looking to have a nightclub. I think he's looking for an opportunity to rent it out um, as a um, as a rental property, if not a rental property, but something where he can rent it out to people that are that are wanting to have uh, graduations or uh, retirement parties or any kind of you know special event that that might uh, come across the doorway. So um, I th I would make a substitute motion to approve the request. Can I ask? So you? I guess my con my concern is that. The, the things that you just mentioned, Mr. Green, were were not things that he mentioned. He didn't talk about doing any of those things. What we've been asked for is to approve the use of a nightclub in a city in the city. So, for that reason, I can't I can't support uh, approving this. Can I ask the applicant? Is that what you intend, since you're going to be living in Colorado, to basically rent this out periodically as an as an entertainment venue, or is your intent to have a a manager who does live here manage it as a as a bar, a neighborhood bar? If I had a bar and I would have to do that, that's what I would do. But like he said, just to get it rented out to uh, uh, birthday parties. I mean for. Uh, uh, when you have a baby shower and stuff like that, you know, just the option that I have to be able to get the place rented out. And like I said, definitely have to have the security we need and stuff. But like I said, the building has been ran down so much. And when I went to buy the building, they said, uh, I said, give me the keys to get in. Oh, it's open. I said, what do you mean it's open? He said, well, people keep breaking in and stuff. And uh, so... We don't put keys. I mean, we don't block it anymore. So, like I said, since I've been there, I painted it. I put a new roof on it. I'm doing, bringing it up to date so it'll look like nicer for the community. And okay, I do. But, I'm sorry, but but you don't yet really have definite plans for how it's going to be operated well, yeah. or managed. Is that a, yes. a correct statement? I, well, I'm, yes, because I'm not ready to move right now. Okay. But I'm trying to get everything where I can rent it out or make money out of it. Mr. Davis, 
Wait, so I guess I'm a little bit curious if this if the intention is not to use it as a nightclub in the city and you're not really sure I'm I'm not really understanding why the conditional use for nightclub in the city has been filed. Cindy, I'm going to have Scott talk a little bit about this. Yeah, it, I think this okay. is uh, this is a really good point of question and discussion and in order to help out with this, I'd like to invite Mr. J.R. Cox to come up and talk a little bit about the distinction between event center and uh, nightclub in the city and how nightclub in the city applies to both. So a really good question, and I think uh, J.R. can shed some light on this subject. Commissioners, good afternoon. J.R. Cox, Metropolitan Planning. So under our current code, if there's entertainment and there's liquor cereal malt beverage on the premises it would be defined as a nightclub in the city it may well be an event center it may be a place that's not open regular hours it's just open for rentals but if there's liquor and entertainment occurring there it is a nightclub in the city even if somehow it were not a nightclub in the city but truly an event center so no liquor on site none not not being sold but just being there and being consumed so it's just a place you can rent out for your private functions. It would be classified as an event center. And there's still a 200-foot distance requirement from residential zoning districts, parks, schools, and churches. It's 300-foot for a nightclub in the city. And I know we've had this discussion before. We have. And that's part of the deal that everything falls under nightclub. And the minute somebody sees nightclub, all of a sudden they're thinking about maybe some of the worst compared to some of the better ones. Yes. And we get to deal with that. So until we change terminology or how we look at different ones, it's going to be a nightclub. Yeah. In order to help draw this distinction a little bit more, JR, some questions for you would be that if this action, if this conditional use gets approved, can the applicant operate this as a, as a bar or establishment with alcohol and entertainment most well, certainly That's, most certainly yeah. okay but then if the applicant intends to have it as an event center but they intend to have alcohol and they intend to have entertainment in the form of music or dancing or something would they need this conditional use in order to be able to do that yes correct yeah What's That's both? where the catch-22 is so if the intention then, and one more question, if the intention then is to operate it as an event center that could be rented out, and later on the applicant changes their mind and decides that they want to open it as a bar or a drinking establishment with entertainment and alcohol on a more permanent basis, they change the model that it's no longer an event center, they want to go to a, a regular hours, is that something that's allowed if this conditional use is approved? Well, as it's for that particular use, yes. It's a nightclub in the city. Thank you. I believe we have a substitute motion on the floor, which I would like to second. I, I understand the neighborhood concerns, but I think it comes down to a matter of trust and the automatic assumption that no one who manages a facility that serves alcohol can be trusted to manage it properly I think is unfair. This is a building that is commercial zoned. It's designed to be a, a bar, basically. And um, I, don't, I don't think we can legitimately just deny this conditional use based on the fears of the neighborhood of what might happen. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hey, we got a substitute motion yeah. by Mr. Green, second by Ms. Foster. The only thing I'd like to say is this will become a shooting gallery. And the past history will tell you that. So it may be legal, but it's not it's not right. Uh, sorry for interjecting so much, sir, especially during the commission's discussion. But I did want to bring to light that uh, since we received additional information from the applicant today about the type of establishment and how he intends to operate it. If the commission would like, uh, we could visit with him if you if you defer it till the next MAPC meeting. That would give us time to confer with him some more and come up with conditions that are perhaps more appropriate to an event center 
as opposed to uh, the conditions that we have listed now. Listing it as an option. I, I guess we could vote on a substitute motion and we can always go to a deferral. What's the pleasure of the commission? In just a moment, if you do that, you got a second motion fails. You got to go to the first motion, which is denial. So how are you going to handle that? I do a second substitute motion on top of the first substitute motion. Sure. That's how to keep them straight. So, so if the third motion on the floor the is to the defer. Motion and the first motion. They both got to fail before you can get the third motion. Mm. Both yeah, we have city I legal I online. I would defer to them on that question. So. Yeah, we're getting a little out of uh, hand, but if you want to do a, a second substitute motion for deferral, uh, and if that's approved, you could you could do it that way because it would be a little uh, awkward if everybody wants to defer it to go through both of the motion and or the substitute motion and the motion for a uh, determination before you could do a deferral. So I would recommend if that's the will of the council, just take it in the, the order of if there is a motion for deferral that then go to the substitute then through the original. Now, this is Joe Johnson. I move a second substitute motion to defer. Second. Okay, for two weeks? Two weeks. Could it be long enough so that Mr. Stanley could attend the next DAB and visit with that, or so they could hear directly his con his plans? I think we have to keep That it would be within, a month? We got to keep it within two weeks, otherwise we got to republish it, don't we? Okay. No, we, we would be okay because it has been published and because the deferral would be announced at this meeting, we would be okay, okay without another. So do you want me to change that to four weeks? Well, do we know when the next DAB meeting is? No, yeah, my question is next DAB. Yeah, the, maybe two, two months. The next DAB one meeting is February 7th. So our next planning commission meeting is February 3rd, and there's another planning commission after that on February 17th. Yeah, I'll, I'll say four weeks. Well, <laughs> instead of weeks, maybe just say, you know, what date of the planning commission, would you like it on the February 17th meeting? Or the, yes, yes. that's what you're looking for? Sorry. So you're looking for the February 17th meeting? I would second a motion <clears throat> that was modified to say that. And then bring it back to the DAB on February 7th. Okay. 7th or 17th? 17th. 7th. 7th the DAB. For DAB. 17th, 17th for the, the MAPC. For the yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have it straight now. Okay. Any head of discussion? Now we're going to vote on the second substitute motion. Yeah. Let's do a roll call. Please. Yes, sir. Bill Johnson? No. Wait a minute. Fox? We're voting to defer. Voting for deferral. Yes, sir. Voting to defer. I have Bill Johnson as no. No. Fox? Yes. McKay? Yes. Green? Yes. Duell? No. Blick? Yes. Nix? Yes. Foster? Yes. Warren is not here. Joe Johnson? Yes. Miles? No. No. Hartman? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in favor. Three opposed. Motion passes. Okay, this item will be deferred till February 17th. February 17th, yes, sir. Okay, next item. I guess we probably should have asked if Mr. Davis is going to still be in town. Uh, no, but he might be coming back. I got virtual. I got to get on. I've been, like I said, I've been stranded for three months now. Because I went to Dallas. My transmission went out in Oklahoma. Couldn't get the parts, you know. So, hey, I got to do what I got to do. Okay. 
Well, we walkthrough. can also you can also attend virtually too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Is what it is. Item four point three conditional use twenty twenty one triple zero sixty six. This is one of Phillips' cases. Yes, before I get into the staff report and based on the discussion from item 4.1, and this one being a recommended recommendation of a denial by staff, I have tried to reach out to the applicant. I do not believe he is online or in the chambers. Um, so we can do a call out to see if uh, Mr. Thayer is online. Um, I don't believe Mr. John... Stephen Smith is here. He owns a property. Miss, Mr. Thayer is the contract buyer, the one actually wanting to do the vehicle sales. I have sent him an email before the meeting. I tried to call him twice during the last item and have not heard back from him. Mr. Thayer, are you online? Uh, anybody representing Con 2166 for vehicle sales on West Maple? I move for deferral. Second. If, would you, I guess an option was we could uh, table it until the end of the planning commission items. I can try to reach out to him again. Um, or I guess you could move for deferral. It's uh, whatever the will of the board is. I move that we table this to the end of the, to be our last item on the uh, agenda, the planning commission agenda. Second. I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Uh, Carries. Next one's 4.4 zoning case 2021 61 That's Cassie's case, and here she comes. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Kathy Morgan for the Planning Department. Um, <clears throat> we have the zoning map up on the up on the screen right now. This is in the Delano Overlay District, um, and also within the the uh, urban infill area. the The tenants of those two plans is that um, residential be developed. Uh, as you can see from the zoning map, the commercial fronts uh, West Douglas. You do have some um, multifamily uh, uh, duplexes within that residential area south. The main uh, property owner within that block is St. Patrick. I'm sorry, St. Joseph's Catholic Church, owned by the Catholic Diocese. And um, they have a go to the aerial, would you please type in? Um, so this is their educational facility uh, to the east, and then parking uh, south of that. The um, cathedral is just to the south of the subject property. Um, next, please. Next slide, type in, please. Um, and as you can see here, um, for the comprehensive plan that was identified for future growth as commercial, however, this is a well-established uh, residential um, institutional area in the way of churches and schools. Um, so staff would recommend or is recommending that that use be continued. Next slide, please. Um, this is looking um, southwest along the railroad track. The parcel of land is just on the north side of this, um, of one of the church buildings here. Next, please. Uh, this is looking uh, back, mostly, uh, mostly west. Um, you can see there's a drive here. Uh, the railroad tracks are to the uh, northwest of this pie-shaped uh, parcel next. And this is looking north from that driveway to the commercial area along West Douglas. Um, as you can see on the, the north side of the railroad track, there's a commercial building that sits off to the left. 
and then it's uh, surface parking next. Uh, and this is looking back northeast. Um, this is a storage, uh, self-storage um, business here um, and some, um, I wanna say this is some kind of manufacturing storage in this building. There is a residence. What, ballet school, actually. Oh, it's a ballet school. I, it could be manufacturing. <laughs> That's close. Manufacturing ballet <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a new type of business. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Foster. Nutcracker. I live a block away, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> make, and then there's- They make nutcrackers there, don't yeah. they? Yeah, <laughs> then there's residential, again, just north of where the Catholic school is across the street. Um, next, please. Do I have another slide? Yes. Okay, so there's an alleyway that separates this residential from uh, one of the school, uh, Catholic school buildings. Next, please. I'm sorry, what? Oh, that's it. Um, can we, I asked that there be a site plan included in this. I didn't see one. If you will look at your staff report, I did ask the applicant to just give us a, a preliminary site plan so that you could see um, that a duplex could fit on that lot. That has not been uh, finalized yet. There has been discussion about um, requesting uh, that the applicant uh, conform with some of the, in the past we have done uh, protective overlays regarding the architectural um, materials, uh, how the building addresses the primary street. And so just for purpose of showing that that could fit on, that one could fit on the lot, that's what this is. And the applicant, the agent is in the audience and they might be able to answer that um, more completely but staff is recommending approval for this zone change from SF5 to TF3. This lot has been vacant for at least 20 years. Any questions of Kathy? So they would have to comply with the overlay requirements for yes, architectural would, materials, et cetera. We would work with them to do that, yes. And has the DAB heard this one? Um, no, it will be heard February 7th. I have not had any, uh, I have had some contact with a representative of the Catholic Church and their concern was how that, how the uh, duplex would fit on, would could fit on the lot, that, that the amount of square footage be there and, and it is a little bit more than 6,000 square feet, which is what is required uh, for duplex zoning. Any other questions to Kathy? So you're saying that there is a protective overlay or there is not a protective overlay? Because I didn't see Just, it in, no, I didn't did see it in make, the staff report. We did not make a rep recommendation for a protective overlay okay. uh, in the staff report. Uh -huh. um, There's a lot I, of times you do. If, yes, we do. But I think the last time we did one of these, we made a recommendation um, that the applicant follow the uh, general guidelines of the urban infill and the Delano overlay because this does meet the intent of residential development in, in those two plans. Any other questions? Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Applicant or agent? Kirk Miller, K. Miller Engineering. I'm the agent for the applicant, and we're in agreement with staff comments. Any questions, the agent? Do you have a plan for how the duplex will fit on that triangle? It'll probably be a two-story duplex. And will the, like the parking, will it go out to which direction? It has to go. Why did I not get that? 
I'm sorry. I always draw my That's comment. Okay. Look um, at the back side of that page. Okay. Got it. Kurt, Any other questions? Just a, a comment. Um, I live a block away, mm -hmm. and when the trains go around that, like, 300-degree curve that they have to go around, the vibration is kind of amazing from a block away. I would just suggest that you go stand on that lot while a train's going by so you know what you're getting into. <laughs> I'm not the builder. I'll let him go do that. <laughs> Whoever it is needs <laughs> to be aware. Before he puts his money into it, he can look at Earthquake it. Earthquake yeah. proof. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I, I guess there's been discussion about a protective overlay, and I don't know if if you've heard anything or no. thought about that, or this is the first you've heard of it? Yeah, right. We The comments were about the Delano overlay, and that's fine. Oh, if I said protective, I meant Delano oh, because okay. it has okay. those special requirements. Okay, all right. Okay. Sorry. No, that's that that, that, no, that's fine. It's just... Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here in the commission want to hear this case or speak on this case? I guess we're hearing it. Anybody virtual want to talk on this case? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to commission. Much pleasure to the board. I move we approve. First staff comments. Motion by Ms. Fox Foster. Second. Second by Mr. Green. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good. Next case, 4.5. Zoning case 2021-00062 with a CUP 2021-00070. Philip, you're on. Yep. Good afternoon, Philip Ziebenbergen, for the record. Um, this application, or applications, uh, is for a site located on the southwest corner of East 13th Street and Webb Road. The zone change is from GO, General Office, to LC Limited Commercial to unify the zoning on the site and only applies to what is currently Parcel 3, as you can see here, it's on the west and south sides of the property um, that immediately butt um, the Wichita Collegiate uh, School. Sorry, we're fighting over the mouse. Um, Wichita Collegiate School it occupies uh, this property here. Um, the major uh, portion of this application is with the CUP amendment. Um, it's a considerable, um, considerably substantial amendment that's uh, really updating a lot of the language and even just how the CUP is written to be a little bit more modern. Um, it does come with some significant changes as well. Um, a lot of those are uh, generalized in your staff report uh, regarding what the changes are. A good chunk of them are what uh, the changing of the language is actually consolidating things um, into more of a modern way of reading it versus having a lot more statements. They um, just consolidated things into bullet points instead. The things I'll spend the most time on for the sake of time are the items that uh, are the major ones of revision, um, general provision five regarding signage. Uh, they are, are asking for uh, more signage than what the sign code would normally allow on the site based on the frontage of both Web Road and 13th Street. Staff is... Uh, Agreeable to the request, the signage along Web Road would allow for six signs. They're actually only proposing five. So they're proposing more sign area, but they're actually only doing it with one less sign. Um, so that's a general good compromise if there's one fewer sign to look at, even though they're having a little bit more sign area. Um, on 13th Street, they're allowed five signs, and they are asking for more sign area than the code would allow. On both frontages, one of the things that we looked at and are agreeable with is one of the things that counts towards both the sign count and the sign area is the development development identification sign. So as you're driving in, if you go to the aerial, if you're driving in on the private drive, there there's a, a sign on these um, brick pillars that you know say country club park. So that sign area and that actually counts towards the sign count. So you're not having five tenant signs along both frontages, um, that development application sign, how, or development identification sign, um, however it might be changed in the future, will count against what they're proposing in the CUP. So that was one thing we looked at and one thing we considered when we were being agreeable with that request. Uh, general provision eight would allow a parking reduction on what will be parcels two through seven. If you go to the C, uh, new CUP drawing, 
Let's click forward a few slides here. I uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. So new parcels two through seven. So everything, basically the entire site. Parcel one is staying parcel one and it's actually not party to this. There's a bank on there and nothing's changing about parcel one. So um, everything in here is requesting a parking reduction and one would be permitted with the submittal of a uh, parking analysis and for review and approval by uh, the zoning administrator. Um, in the past, what is going to be just parcel four right here, the existing office building in 1989 was approved for a parking reduction. And so basically they're looking to apply that um, to the rest of it and allow for some flexibility, knowing they don't have it completely nailed down exactly how this development is going to play out. They are intending some sort of mixed use uh, concept with some residential, some commercial um, as it kind of plays out, having the ability to submit a parking analysis to the zoning administrator to allow for parking reduction in the future, knowing you might have the opportunity to have some shared parking scenarios where there might be some uses during the day that need the parking, and then maybe some uses that um, at night can use also some of the similar parking. So that is something that the proposing staff is agreeable to that as well, knowing it through that submittal process, there wouldn't necessarily be a 100% yes it is, but could be a back and forth of um, no, we don't like the amount of parking you're asking for reduction or basically be able to determine it on an administrative level. Uh, one of the major things is uh, new proposed uses um, on parcels two through seven, which is, is the subject area. One of them is a kennel boarding facility, but it would be for the private use of the owners or tenants or residents within the CUP. Basically as an amenity, think of it if you have condos or apartments, you might have something on the first floor that allows you to have doggy daycare as you go to work. Um, or maybe you work on the site, so you bring your dog with you and can actually use doggy daycare on site. That's um, kind of what the applicant explained. Would it necessarily be open to the public so you're not necessarily going to induce a lot of additional traffic of people driving by from outside? It would be for the private use of those on site, whether they live, live work, or are a tenant there would likely be driven by market factors. You know, the possibility of that actually happening will remain to be seen, but they thought it would be a neat idea to possibly allow it to use as, a, as an amenity on the site. Um, and restricting it to those who would just be on the site would mitigate possible traffic and noise of what normally would have been a kennel or doggy daycare facility. Uh, one of the bigger ones is event center, entertainment establishment, um, including those that serve alcohol, so we are including nightclub as a city as a use. Um, tavern and drinking establishment, all are proposed uses on um, parcels two through seven. This is the part that um, staff and the applicant are in disagreement. Um, staff is proposing, there actually needs to be a correction in your staff report on this paragraph here. Staff is proposing that parcels five, six, and seven, seven being the um, private road, um, prohibit those uses based on the proximity to the school property on the west and the south. What, our, what we envision is that uses that developed are, are developed on these parcels would actually be a buffer from those uses being able to be developed on parcels two through four, which are external to the site at the commercial corner of 13th and Webb. So they could be there. Um, any development on parcels five and six, and I guess you could consider seven because they could redevelop that road because it's private. Um, could act as a buffer from those types of uses to the school property. So the, the correction in your staff report under item B, there is parcels five, six, and seven. The recommended language at the rear of your, uh, in the attachment of your staff report, includes the prohibition of that use, of those uses on parcel seven. I just caught it before the meeting that um, parcel seven wasn't listed in the written part of the staff report. Property to the north of this is single family residential limited commercial. The majority of the property across the street is the commercial shopping center with like Whole Foods um, and things of that nature. Um, the SF5 property is part of the Foliage Homeowners Association and is undeveloped. Um, property to the west and the south, as we've mentioned, is the school. It's zoned single family SF5. Property to the east across Webb Road is limited industrial and it's a drainage pond, but also a private park. 
um, property to the northeast across the intersection is the waterfront development. It's zone limited industrial and it's actually part of the same drainage network. The initial part of the property, as you guys are mostly familiar with, likely is, is part of the, is a big lake um, that the business is front. Staff is recommending approval um, subject to the conditions of being developed with insubstantial conformance to um, the recommended uh, CUP text, whatever the recommendation of that text is out of this planning commission meeting, whether you are amenable to staff recommendation um, or you'll hear from the applicant of what they're wishing it to be. Um, it is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Um, it identifies the site as a mix of commercial new residential or new residential employment, and they're looking to do a mixed use residential in the area with residential commercial uses. Um, I have not heard any opposition to this. I did have a request for information about the application early on, but never heard back um, from them. So I uh, have not heard anything opposed to this. It did go to the district advisory board too, um, and they recommended approval. Or actually, I'm sorry, it was the, it will be going in um, February. Too many cases going on right now. Uh, it'll be going in February. Um, the council person uh, is very aware of this project, um, and um, so we will be working with them, and they'll be have a, a dab uh, before it goes to city council. Uh, we can go through the site pictures. We'll go through them. There's a lot of them. We'll go through them briefly. Um, this is on looking north or southwest from 13th Street towards the collegiate um, ball field. Next picture. This is looking south at the bank. This is parcel one. This is not included in the application. Next picture. This is looking at the office building, um, looking south at the office building that is currently existing, which will be part of parcel new parcel four. Next picture. Uh, this is looking east at the waterfront development, northeast of the site. Next picture. This is looking at the same office building from Webb Road. You can see the considerable amount of land um, to the northeast of that that is going to be uh, parcels two and three they're looking to develop. Next picture. This is looking across to the east from what, at Webb Road. That's the drainage lake in the private park. Next picture. Uh, this is looking north um, at the commercial development north of 13th Street. Next picture. This is looking uh, to the west at what will be parcels five and six on the south side of the property. Next picture. This is looking southwest at the collegiate entrance to the collegiate, I believe that's the elementary school portion of their campus. Next picture. On site looking north, this is the pond in the middle. The uh, office building is would be to the left of the picture. This would, is looking across the pond at what will be parcels two and three. Next picture. This is towards the rear of the property, looking at what would be parcel six, and I believe the building there is part of the collegiate campus. Next picture. This is looking uh, to the northwest. Those are the lights of the ball field of collegiate. Next picture. Looking back north, this is the bank from the back side. This is the side of the building. That's the office building. Next picture. Um, looking back at uh, what would be parcels two and three from the interior of the site. Next picture. And then looking north again at the commercial development north of 13th Street. I think we have one more that looks at the, yep, yeah, that's the um, foliage development here. This is Whole Foods, so the site's over this direction off of 13th Street. And I can stand for any questions. Any questions? Ms. Foster? Philip, just, I'm perhaps confused, but is it normal for a private drive to be a parcel in, unto itself? That seems a little odd. I'll defer that to the applicant or the okay. agent. Um, because it is private drive, it is a private street. It's not maintained by the city, so it would have to be either included in a parcel or made a parcel by itself. When, when it's platted, it's platted as a reserve. So maybe they just took the dimensions of the reserve and made it its own parcel. Okay. It just seems odd that it's it's got uses including residential and commercial development if it's basically going to be a street but I don't know that that actually interferes with the zoning decision I, at all so. I really don't think it does uh, it does allow for the flexibility if they were to redevelop the southern portion of the site and reorient the road 
Um, they do have a stipulation in there that um, buildings, if they're under the same ownership, can cross parcel boundaries and things like that. So, like, it could provide some flexibility. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Philip? Seeing none, the applicant or agent. Good afternoon, Brian Lindeback, MKC Engineering, 411 North Webb Road, on behalf of the owner and applicant. Um, <clears throat> as you know, this is uh, probably one of the nicer commercial buildings in, in uh, East Wichita, at least I think anyways. Uh, the ownership group has uh, been working very closely with the school district, or the collegiate school next door. <coughs> They've met with uh, the uh, chairman of the board, and, as well as the, um, the head of the school uh, and they're collaborating on some of the development activities that are that are planned here. So I think that's important to note. In fact, some of the, their children attend this school. So um, with that in mind, um, we're in agreement with staff comments, except for um, the item in, in B. Uh, it is uh, 3B, where it talks about limiting the uses on the southern parcels. Um, uh, I think it's the last couple sentences of that item B. And if you're looking at the staff report, it's on page three. Uh, we want uh, the uses to you know, be the same across the board, uh, allowing for uh, changes that will occur. Uh, this is intended to be a mixed use development as things pr progress, uh, but uh, that will allow us to uh, give some good flexibility there um, with a mixed use development. So those are the primary uh, things I want to make mention to you is that uh, that the two property owners are working together and that they're collaborating on some of these these items. And so that was the <coughs> reason we didn't want this to go on consent. Um, and, and to answer the question about parcel seven with regard to, to uh, being its own parcel, uh, the current parcel lines and, and plat and CUP lines did not align with uh, with that road. Uh, that private drive and so we created that parcel one so it could be identified by the different parties if there is any ever any different parties but also um, to kind of quantify that area that that's defined there and then as far as um, it, it, it could change that parcel boundary could change in the future and we would adjust that um, at that time thank you mm -hmm. with that all stand for any questions any questions agent so for on page three, item three B, you're asking for basically the last sentence that says uses on parcels five and six. Yes, not and, be re restrained. And then the same. I think uh, Philip had mentioned five, six, and seven is intended to write seven there. Uh, we're just asking that, that all those uses uh, not be restricted on those southern parcels. Uh, because there is uh, collaboration between the two owners, and uh, they are they're working closely together, and uh, this will allow for the maximum flexibility and the maximum potential for development on this property. Uh, just for example, one thing that you could think of, just to help you guys get an idea, maybe uh, there's a uh, a building there that has a multifamily or multi-tenant. Uh, maybe there's a commercial aspect to the first floor, and maybe they would have a cocktail bar there. That would have drinks and entertainment, and that wouldn't um, that wouldn't be allowed by code. Just kind of th same things that we've been talking about today on some other cases. Uh, so that's the idea is to be able to allow allow some of those activities to occur. Uh, it'll be done in a tasteful manner. This is obviously a very expensive piece of property. Any other questions? Thank you. Is there anybody else in the commission chamber want to speak on this item? Is there anybody virtual? Hearing none, I'll bring it back to commission. What's the pleasure of the board? I I would comment that I can see uh, the request to change the 
the restrictions on parcels five, six, and seven simply because it's not like the school is directly, the school building itself is directly across the property line. It's sports fields and a track. So I think, unless I hear something that changes my mind, um, that I would agree with the applicant's request to um, allow the same uses on parcels five, six, and seven as on the rest of the property. Is that a motion? Well, it was a it was a question to the rest of the board. Does anybody disagree with it? That I was going to I was going to second that motion at that. Oh, I, I have well, this three problem. Times the motion, I was going to second it. Differentiating <laughs> between okay, I would like to make a motion that we approve per staff comments with the exception of item three B, and revise that to allow parcels five, six, and seven to have the same uses as the rest of the property. Second. Good. Motion by. I have a question. Ms. Foster, second question. by Mr. McKay. Go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> Does the uh, school administration agree with that? The agent yes. says the school administration agrees with that. <laughs> Could you say it again? Yes, Mr. Johnson. This is Brian Linda back again. I, yes, they've been they've been collaborating, and 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 that they're aware of these these details. Because there is a school right there south, is the upper school. Part of it. The property is a school. You don't see it. The property is the a upper school, school is right there south of the. South <clears throat> property. But if the administration agrees, I'm okay. They do. Uh, staff, have we heard anything from Legion? I have not heard in public comment via email or phone call on this case. And they collegiate would have been informed, correct? Yes. I mean, they're the direct neighbor, so... Yeah, this had a fairly substantial uh, ownership list, probably at least 500 to 750 feet from the property line. So collegiate likely would have gotten two letters because there's two separate parcels there. So yes, they would have been duly informed. Now the only thing is, is they've seen the staff report that said it wasn't gonna have it. They would have to request the staff report or find it online when it is posted a week before. I have not, or I did not receive any requests for the staff report to review. We got a motion to approve with the change of the two parcels. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody, aye. Is anybody, aye. anybody opposed? Yes, it passes. I guess I'm glad it wasn't called a nightclub. It is called a nightclub. But it is called a nightclub. That's an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> the difference... Okay, we're going back. I attempted to reach out to the applicant via email and phone. Have not been able to get a hold of him unless I unless I missed somebody coming online over the last two items. I do not believe the applicant, or really the, it's the contract buyer, um, is present for this case. Move that we defer this item. Second. Would you like to defer it to the third? Sure. Okay. Got a motion to defer till the February 3rd. Got a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, that completes a planning commission meeting. And so now it's we'll move away from it and go to the VCA. First item on it's approve the minutes of December 16th. I move for approval. Minutes. Second. Second. You got a motion, motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hartman, I'll have to abstain. Second by Mr. Green. I'll have to abstain, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKay will have to abstain. I was looking for Florence. Okay. Okay. So. 
So do you have all the ones that are not here or where they're not there? Yeah, they in Florence. Unless I lost track of time, which I could very easily have done. Am I abstaining? Uh, we have- No, not on this one. In, in the minutes- You're good on this one. In the minutes- it, Thank you. <laughs> in the okay. minutes, it shows Mr. Blick and Mr. Florence as being absent. Okay. Okay, then I won't abstain. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Aye. The next item is BZA 2021 0072. Um, so do we need to do we need to hear this or just see if anybody wants? I I guess your the the as with the conditional use case the applicant um, is not present. Their request is to reduce it from um, zero to four or backwards four to zero. Um, I guess it's the will of the board if you want to try to take this on consent or do um, any commissioners have any questions or if there's any opposition to the BZA. If I may, sir, in order to help you, in the staff analysis, Philip, did we find that all five conditions were met? Yes. Okay, so in the staff report, we found that all five conditions were met. So therefore, if you wish to take it as, as a consent item without hearing it, then uh, you would simply find that all you also agree that all five conditions have been met. And then, but I suppose I better ask if there's anybody virtual wants to speak on this or anybody here in the commission chamber want to hear this case? I just have one question, and that is there's a, a vehicle that would be permanently parked there, as I understand it. That is my understanding. That And so you know, that would have to be street parking. Is that a like a multi-passenger van or is it a you know there, there are some of those vans that are really big and I've driven that shady way many a time and it is congested getting through there I I'm not aware likely it would be a multi-passenger vehicle of some kind my understanding is it would be able to be used to transport the children and you would likely want to have a vehicle that can transport seven people but that can be but done that with can a be an SUV or it could right. be a so I'm not aware of the okay. exact vehicle um, that's the, the only thing shady way it has 30 feet of paved right-of-way which allows for if there's parking on both sides of the street adjacent to each other it does permit one lane of traffic okay. through it so you have a yield street as most neighborhood streets are okay and I'm sure school buses travel down I guess I was waiting for this case because I, I'm not uh, really in favor of, of reducing the parking to zero. Uh, to zero and have it be all street parking. I was going to have a suggest or recommend that, that we allow to the um, setback, the front setback to be uh, vacated and then have parking allowed in that in that space as opposed to having it all out right. there on the street because they really don't have enough space on the street in front of their property to park and i think one of the uh, one of our uh, uh virtual attendees earlier was saying that his concern was that there would could be vehicles parking in front of his property so i think we need to defer to jeff van zant about it on whether or not the board can as an approval you know the, the request was for a parking reduction you know you would have the ability to say no we want to require a parking reduction down to one um, as opposed to zero that that would be within the purview of this request the the possible legal issue here is a separate request to allow parking within a setback is that within the purview of this decision can you it's one thing to you know reduce the parking requirements but can you also then approve the parking to be allowed in the setback when that was not an advertised part of this request so uh, if Jeff Van Zant is online um, and would like to provide opinion on that because technically that's that would be a separate variance and I don't know if that can did be you put the site did you put the site plan back up I'd like to comment that 
I think I mean, the way this house looks, it's pretty clear that it has never had on-site parking. And I live in a neighborhood where many of the houses don't have garages or driveways or even curb cuts as well. And it's not the end of the world to have people park on the street. In fact, it's a very you know, efficient use of public paving to, uh, to not have every single lot have to have off-street parking. I think this is entirely doable. I've not, you say Shady Brook is very congested, but it seems to me to be plenty wide enough to allow parking and through traffic. Uh, and I believe this thing was built in the 40s. 42. So, I mean, it's been uh, 80 some years and never had parking in it. Uh, that is saying it's kind of unusual today when I was going through it with staff. I don't know if there's an aerial that shows a driveway that's not a driveway that goes clear back to somebody else's oh, yeah. Right. property. Yeah. Right. And right. they're right. basically crossing this lot, so they're really using this lot. And I could easily see where they could use their backyard for parking if they had to. So they'd have to get permission from the property to the south to, or right. to the to the, the west to to access parking. Apparently right. somebody's got it. <laughs> well, or maybe. not. Anyway. Well, that, that, that's, what, that's what prompted my question about uh, screening between SF5 uh, and, and uh, uh, TF3 was because if they had to put screening up, then that would essentially uh, shut off that, that drive that they're using back there. But, I, I mean, I, it's, if the majority of the commission is okay with the street parking, I... I'm fine with it too. Okay. Do we I have actually a think it would be. One thing, sorry. One thing we got to keep in mind is Shady Brook, whenever you have an event at Wichita State, that place is extremely uh, congested oh, and yeah. parking is everywhere. A lot different. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board on this case? I think we've kind of hashed it out. Oh, Scott, you got something? Yes, sir. Have we asked for public comment? I just want to make sure that there's an opportunity for, for public comment or for the, and we've double checked. Does anybody the virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual? Okay, what's the pleasure of the board? I would move to approve with the note that the five conditions have been met. A motion to approve. I'll second. Second. Second by Mr. Hartman. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody, aye. anybody opposed? Okay, the next BZA case is the BZA 2021-00073. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Kathy Morgan for the Planning Department. Um, this is a county uh, request for a variance. It is located at an intersection of uh, section line roads, as you can see here, uh, North Meridian and 101st Street uh, West. Go to the next slide, please. Um, this is zoned rural residential. This parcel is right at an acre, um, and it was sold before the rural residential standard be two acres, minimum of two acres. And so that house that you see here, the, it has been there since 1908. And so it's been added on to several times. Um, it does have uh, drive access to Meridian and then also on to 101st Street. Uh, the section line roads have an 85 foot uh, building setback to allow for uh, future expansion. And as I understand that, that was common in within the city limits of Wichita at major intersections. So um, the applicant is requesting a variance to allow a uh, shop building in this northeast corner. Could you go to the next slide, please? Uh, this is the locational um, map showing that it's in the unincorporated area of the, the county. Next. 
Um, this is the site plan. Again, as I said, um, <coughs> the center line of Meridian, from the center line of Meridian to the front of the building uh, wall is 60 feet. Um, there's, uh, so south of the driveway, it only, the variance only applies to the area that is in front of the building. The request to reduce it to 60 feet. So there's some corrections in the staff report regarding um, the five criteria. Um, and that is this, the property is unique. Um, that, I'm sorry, that, um, the uh, location of the, this is a, a hardship created um, by, the, by the property, not the property owner, because there's a lateral field behind that can't be built over. Um, there is um, the building, uh, the building is located on a, on a parcel that's less than two acres. Um, the applicant did make an effort to contact the surrounding property owner to purchase um, enough additional land so that the building would not be located in the front setback. Um, the the uh, location of this new building is not atypical for uh, section line roads. The, the Planning Commission has approved uh, these kind of, of setbacks reducing the, the 85 feet in the past. And as I said, it would only apply to that area in, immediately in front of the building. Um, the hardship um, that, uh, and I mentioned previously that the applicant has uh, made an effort to uh, purchase additional land, however, um, under Kansas case law, in order to con con constitute an unnecessary hardship, the use restriction, restriction viewing the property and setting of its environment must be so unreasonable as to constitute an arbitrary and capricious interference with private property rights, or there must be convincing proof that it is impossible to use the property for a, for a conforming purpose, or there must be factors to show that the zoning code restriction would, if, would, would in effect deprive the property owner of his or her property without compensation. Um, we do not, uh, this is one of the conditions that staff um, finds that this does not meet the criteria. The, the consideration for public interest is um, staff has in discussing with um, county council and uh, county public works, uh, staff finds that because of the location of the building and the, um, that the variance is only applied to um, the 40 feet front 40 feet of the building extending into the um, right-of-way that this does meet the spirit and intent of the last criteria number five. So um, should the board, so we're recommending denial um, or finding that this application does not meet the five criteria. However, should the commission determine that all five conditions um, necessary to the granting of the variance can be found to exist, then that would include uh, the front setback reduction sh shall only apply to the location of the new, new structure as so not shown on the site plan. A survey drawing with a scaled plan with all easements for utilities and structures shall be submitted uh, by the applicant before the variance is considered to be final 
and that the applicant will obtain all the proper building permits and, and inspections and modifications must comply with all state, county, and any other applicable standards. So if you would type in, go to the photos, please. Um, this is looking uh, west at the front of the house. Uh, this was a long house, so I have several photos showing the front of this house. Um, 101st Street is to the left of the picture. Um, this is the drive access onto Meridian. Next, please. Um, this is looking from the gravel road, 101st Street, uh, back north uh, west at the at the house and you can see they have their sign posted next uh, this is looking at the north end of the house uh, looking west and this is the farmland immediately north of the property next um, this is looking from um, on site from in front of the house uh, back toward, um, okay, let me orient us here. This is a, um, a tank, a propane tank. The location of the new structure would be uh, to the left of that and a little bit in front. So this is looking um, onto Meridian. Next. And this is looking north uh, along Meridian. Um, so this row of trees uh, back here, the structure would be behind that row of trees. Next. Um, and this is looking uh, north along the west property line. This would be where, uh, according to the site plan, uh, the lateral field is located. Next. Um, this is another picture of the north end of the building the house. Sorry, next. <laughs> and this is the property um, kind of northeast um, of, the, of the site. Um, it's well set back from the roadway. It has mature trees, again, as the buffer along um, the property line uh, with mature trees on the, on the site. Next. Is that it? Oh, no. This is the intersection of 101st and Meridian. Uh, it's from the southeast corner looking southeast. So this is all agricultural field also to the south. Next. Here's the agricultural land to the south. Next. And this is looking, um, this is actually looking east along 101st Street. This is the intersection of at Meridian. And this is the subject property to your left. Next. Go back, please. I'll answer any questions. Mr. What's, Hartman. Kathy, what's the right of way on Meridian? It's 85 feet from the center line. From the center line. Of Meridian. Right setback. I'm sorry, setback. setback. 75 feet. Is Lynn Packer on the line? Yes, Kathy, I'm here. Can you answer that question, please? What is the right of way? Half street right away on the The half street side. right away on Meridian. Is 40. Uh, the right street right away is 40 feet. Can you repeat that, please? <clears throat> the half street right away along Meridian is 40 feet. And you don't need any more right away there? Not currently, but most definitely in the future, additional right away would be necessary. We would take a typical uh, intersection right away, which would, in this, for this, the length of this entire property would be 75 foot need. How far is this building off of the right away? It would be the the uh, building would be 60 feet from the center line. So you're talking for in the future, uh, if they're wanting an 85, um, the, the setback, it would be um, 15 feet that they're into the potential uh, right of way needed to expand that intersection. So 
if they were going to expand the intersection, this this building would be in the right of way. Yes, they need. That's in the future. We don't know when that would happen. On, to expand on that, the staff report on on page two, the fourth paragraph down. It said that county public work, last sentence, county public works in general is not opposed to reducing the setback line provided it does not interfere with future right of way needs. Um, and just right above that, it says even if it were reduced to 60 feet, um, the proposed building edge would sit on the meridian right of way line with no setback at all. So if Can you show this <clears throat> the hand sketch. Could you go back to site plan, please? Hi, Ben. There you go. So I was kind of confused. I, I, I realized that in the future, 75 feet would be needed or possibly needed, uh, but 60 feet could could be okay. That's staff, uh, as, a, as I said again, this is a future recommendation. Um, don't know, you know, there's no um, certainty that this intersection would be improved to that uh, width. And, and staff is, is saying that with that only applying to the, the frontage of the existing building and not the entire length of the property, that this does meet the spirit and intent. We have had no contact uh, from neighbors, um, no phone calls, no emails uh, regarding this request. So I, I guess theoretically, if they were to move this building 15 foot further west, then that would be 75 feet that would be needed, even though the would then be sitting right on the right of way line. Right. And the applicant is here, and he can address the issues um, that they have with this site plan or, or what their thinking is behind this. I just remind everybody that all five conditions have to be met, and I make it four out of five that are not. So even if we get the right-of-way situation reorganized, that still leaves three more to discuss. Any other questions of Kathy? Applicant or agent? Give us your name and address and address, please. You got Good afternoon. Uh, Chase Klinkner, I live at 10203 North Meridian Avenue. Uh, we've lived at this house for approximately four and a half years. We're wanting to build that building there because of the lateral field back there behind the house where we would be able to do it. There is no other place to move that lateral field. And as, if I even had somewhere to put it, it would cost upwards to like $20,000 just to move that. And then uh, <clears throat> then this property here, it's also about four miles south of the county line. So for them to think that they need to, to widen that road, there's only one subdivision up there. And I've talked to the farmer that owns <clears throat> all that ground around the house, and he says he knows most of those farmers up there, and he says they're not going to sell any of that land anytime soon for them to develop anything. So <clears throat> as far as a need to widen that road, I don't necessarily see a, a point in that. And then uh, <clears throat> the... So where the building's sitting now, the 40 foot is the right of way that they have now, which they've also got a, a big ditch that's cut in there. And then <clears throat> right along that right of way, they have uh, the rural water that runs north and south there. And I believe that there's uh, the gas line is either on right there or it's on the east side of the road. So if they were to widen that, they would need to move all, the, move all of that plus cut in that ditch and then the ditch would be pretty much in my front yard and they'd have to remove all of my trees just to do that. And at that point, 
they might as well just buy the property. <clears throat> um, and then also I've talked to, like I said, I've spoke with the farmer that owns all that ground, and he has absolutely no issues with me building that there. And then the, the uh, property owner to the east of me there, he's come over and talked to me, and he's wanting to build a building as well, and he has no issues. Um, and then as far as the public interest, if it, uh, if it would adversely affect the public, uh, honestly, the building is not going to obstruct any view for drivers at that intersection if they were to, to widen it. My trees are cut about 10 or probably, I don't know, 8 foot, 10 foot up so they can see the intersection. It's not blocking anything. It's far enough back that if you're approaching from the north side, you can see the 101st Street going west you can see going east i mean there's nothing to that would obstruct your views there. Uh, and then as far as the hardship goes i think having to spend another 20 some thousand dollars just to move the lateral fields i think is pretty uh pretty substantial and that's especially since there's nowhere else to put it that's that's all i've got any questions? Any questions of the applicant? Mr. McKay. Sir, have you uh, taken into consideration of, you said there's no other place to build it. It looks like to me, when you sit here looking at the aerial photo and your drawing, you know, on the south side of that driveway, is larger than where you want to put the building. Is that correct? Or no? Are you talking the, the entrance there off of 101st there? Between Meridian and your entrance off of 101st. Yeah, so with that being uh, the section line road, it's 85 foot off of that as well. So if if I had to build it there, it would actually overlap where my house is. Because the, the south side of my house there is at, is, uh, 85 foot off the center line. Oh, but in front of your house, between Meridian and your south driveway. I'm just trying to figure a way to, you know, right now you got three out of four things going against you. Right. Right. Would it, be, would it be possible to move this 20 more feet to the west? Not necessarily. I mean, because the farther I move it west, you're going to be, you're not going to be able to have very good access into the, the existing garage that's there. You're going to cut off. You're going to be driving basically in the front yard just to get in, and it's, it's not realistic. So there's a garage there on the, Correct. If, on if, the north side? Yeah, that's what that other drive goes to. That's okay. just a little two-car garage right now. I, I assume that that was the case, but I... Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a very good artist. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know what happens when you assume. Yeah. So you're going back to my question. You're saying then that the area south of the Meridian driveway and east of the 101st Street driveway, there's not enough area to put your building in that area there, which seems to be larger. Me. Correct, but you're going to run into the same issue with the, the setback there at 85 feet. And I think moving it to that spot, you're going to have more of an obstruction to the to the public's view to that intersection there. That's why I decided that it would be best to move it back on the north side there. If you, if you go to the pictures where it shows the propane tank, it will kind of give you a little bit better of an idea of where the building is actually going to be. I'm very familiar with this area, and 101st Street going west from Meridian is not used that much. Correct. From Meridian going north and south, you said there'd probably be no reason for, for future widening of Meridian, but the new high schools within three quarters of a mile south of there. Correct, but a lot of that, and so that, that in property itself, up there is... Uh, you know, they've, had to, they've had to have paved 93rd Street, widen some of the streets just simply because of the high school. High school keeps, keeps the grow. Right, and and within the last year, they just came in and repaved that road. I mean, and as far as them expanding up there, a lot of that ground up there is a floodplain. So I mean, the only the only uh, residence right now is what is there now. That's the majority of your traffic is just for the 
30 or 40 houses. It's the 101st awesome. Street is your major coming over to Meridian to get into Valley Center. Off of Broadway and off of 135. Right. 101st Street is. So, and if you're Meridian, it does the same thing from Sedgwick going south into Valley Center. That's the only reason why I was making a comment about moving it to the south side of your property instead of the north side of your property because you got. I still think you got more space on the south side of your building than you do on the north side of your driveway. That's right. my personal opinion. Any other questions? Uh, go back to the site plan. Would you type in? Okay, so if he moved it south of this driveway access to McLean, he would have 85 feet along the east side and on the on the south side of his property that he would have to deal with uh, the setback, whereas his proposed location is he only has that one uh, setback line to deal with. So if it went south of the drive, the south line of the building would have to line up with the south side of the house because that's at the setback. Correct. That'd be yeah. it'd be eighty five feet off of one hundred and first street, which wouldn't leave much room between there and the drive to build some. Plus the hundred and or eighty five feet off of the Meridian. Yeah. So, I'm how far west from your proposed location? How far west could you theoretically move that building? And not have it conflict with your garage, your two car garage. Realistically, I mean, this is honestly, I, I might be able to move it like a foot or two oh. west. Okay. I was thinking, I was trying to, I was trying to get 15, <laughs> I was trying to get 15, 20 feet. Yeah. To I'm, see if, I, if, if that, if that could work because that way then we wouldn't be. Uh, that far away from the 85 foot that we're trying to right. deal with right now. It'd be nice to see this on in scale. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Joe. I, it, it's you said it yourself. Your drawings a little less than yeah. it could be desired. If, if you could have had, if you have a scale drawing that could actually show the two dimensions. Right. I think that that would be helpful, and I think that's where Joe's going on that. Yes. If we look at the the uh, overhead view, the aerial, the yeah, yeah, the property. Um, that one. So essentially, if you look at the west side of that propane tank, it's going to be approximately three foot to the west of that would be the corner of the building. And then if you run um, 40 foot north, that's where the other corner of the, the building is going to be. If you just look like how the driveway comes around like this, it'll just go straight north. There. Yeah, I, th I think the mouse is close to where uh, the sorry. propane. Yes. Yeah, that's the pro that's what I was thinking that. Yes, that's, that's the, propane the propane tank. tank. So yeah, yeah. It'll be right in there. Uh-huh. And then to approximately in this general facility. What is where where the cursor is right now? Directly to the left, there's something with a white top. I was just going to ask the same is thing. Is that a, like like a trailer? Camper. That's what. That's a camper. Yes. Okay. But that doesn't fit in the garage anyway. No. Right. So really, what you bump into is the camper parking spot, not the garage. In other words, if you reoriented the if, building sideways, could you slide it farther and put it sort of north of the drive garage entrance area where your camper is now? Uh, like if I were to turn the, the whole building sideways, I, I think you'd, I think that it would run into the part of it here. And then back in here is also drainage for the, the property there. Does your, 
your drainage field in the back go all the way from property line to property line pretty much or is there any room on either end where you might no it it basically goes all the way and then and then you'd run into the, the uh, setback off of 101st here because it, it ends approximately right here the lateral fields because i have thought about putting it here until i figure out that that's how far back it it goes any other questions? I would, <clears throat> Mr. Joe, I would tend to deny, unless you can come back with a drawing that proves to me you couldn't move it back further. Joe, do you have any other questions with the, for the applicant? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone in virtual that wants to hear this or talk on this item? Speak on it. Hearing none, I'll bring it back to commission. What's the pleasure of the board? I don't know that we have a whole lot of choice. Um, four out of the five necessary statutorily required conditions are not met. Um, so I move that, making note of that, we do not grant this variance, deny the variance. Do I have a second? Say that dies in without a second, right? I'd kind of like to go along with what Joe was saying. That, you know, the gentleman, they really want to, they can probably eliminate some of these conditions that there if they go back and get somebody to draw it and lay it out. Maybe their building needs to be five feet smaller. Or, you know, I don't know what it'd be. Maybe my idea on the south side of the driveway wouldn't work. I would rather see a variance off of 101st Street than I would Meridian. Primarily because of the traffic, it's a dirt road, farm equipment used more than anything else. But the other side, uh, Meridian and 101st are both paved and they're highly trafficked. So if the gentleman would like to defer, have us defer it rather than deny it, to come back and put something more definitive. I think the other thing, I like the building north where it's at because in the event that Meridian was ever widened or could be turn lanes or something that would be at 101st. We got a lot of property there where that could be accommodated. And this building's far enough north of that intersection. I don't think I'll, I would see that that would ever be widened where it would bother the building being where they're proposing it. I'm not a I move we defer it February 17th. What'd you say, Joe? Oh. Well, let's ask the gentleman if he's willing to. Seven, 17th of February. You may not be able to get it done by then, Joe. That's only two weeks. If if we were to defer this so that you would have time to get a, uh, a, a drawing, a site map, you know, a true site map that's... How long do you think that would take for you to get that done? And uh, then we could bring it back. And I think what you're hearing is that we're trying to figure out a way to make this work. Correct. And and right. I I think um, I think if you could get a you know an engineering an engineer drawn a drawing excuse me an engineer drawing um, that really lays everything out, showing not only uh, the you know the, the pro proposed right of way the, the setbacks and all of that on that drawing. I think that would help us to be able to see if we can possibly make this work. Yeah. Also, no one has asked you what you want to use this building for, but is it the square feet you need? Could the purport to be longer and narrower and maybe fit that way? Yeah. Are there some other alternative sizes or shapes that you might? That, yeah. Uh, the, the building that I have a deposit on is was a special that they had built, and that's... Uh, <laughs> 
or is building. Yeah. And that is, that's essentially what I was wanting. I mean, what we're going to use it for is we've got some hobbies that I race and uh, we've also got a couple of boats that we're going to want to store in there. So I'm kind of running out of room in the little two car garage at the moment. So <laughs> can, can I ask the question? What, what are the other three conditions that he can't meet? The um, weakness, the hardship, the public interest, and the spirit and intent, all four staff have said they don't meet the conditions. And they, it's explained in the staff report. I, I, <clears throat> so we're looking for a deferral? Yeah. I'll make a motion that would defer it for... How uh, long do you think it would take? Yeah, that was... Well, theoretically, you'd get, three weeks won't be enough time, probably, to get what he needs to get done. But if he gets it done before that, then we can have a chance to look at it again. So. Wonder, Scott, you got some input? No, I was just going to point out, I believe that uh, Mr. Joe Johnson has made a motion to defer to the 17th. Oh, did he make the 17th? Oh, okay, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Uh, yes. You think you could get it by the 17th? Or, I, or, I can try. I mean, I, get it deferred again I don't even know where to begin with that. So, <laughs> Would you rather for it to, it to be the 17th and be shorter or a little bit longer and give you a little more time? Time. The seventeenth would be fine. I can see what okay, I can do. Where, where do you even begin or, with? Or we can go four, We can go fourteen days after that, which would be what March. Uh, what, what, March third. Uh, preferably the sooner the better, because okay, he so was <laughs> he was wanting to start in March. That, so that's fine. But. So Joe, you made a motion to defer to the seventeenth. Yes, yeah, sir. I'll. Who seconded? Yeah, you seconded it. John seconded. Okay. Any discussion? All in the favor, say aye. 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 Sir, I just recommend to you to try to get your billing to fit on what, so you don't have to go through all of the four or five hard, the hardship stuff and all this stuff. In other words, you might have to have a building instead of being a certain size, it'd be a lot cheaper to, yeah, in the long run for you to make it fit on your lot rather than your lot fit on the building. Where would you guys recommend putting this? I mean, as, as putting far, it? Yeah, as far as that goes. I mean, well, that's what we're yeah. looking for. That, that's one reason why you really need to have a, some kind of a survey and a layout. Yeah, if we could have a survey sort. of that, yeah. of the of the property itself, and that way then we can dimension things on there a lot easier than what, what we have to work with. Okay. Well, your picture is here, and you got your camper there on the north side of your house. You know, you go along the property line. That camper wasn't sitting there. You might have, might be able to do, work it up better that way. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just, yeah. camper going just like I said, we're just trying to help you get it done because right. we don't meet the criteria. Our hands are kind of tied. Over the lateral line. I appreciate it. All right. There's no additional business, is there? I lost Scott. Trying to conclude the business of this one. I move we adjourn. Does, uh, yeah, one, one additional item. Uh, we've got a new commissioner that's been appointed, Susie Cunningham. That is correct, sir. Uh, and you're doing orientation next week, and then she'll probably be here the following. Yes, sir. And I know that uh, she was here for a while and did some observations. She's on. She's been online, um, and has done some. She's still on, on online and is doing observe the meeting. Right. Susie. 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 To, to, uh, what's her name? Red City Elections. Is this, a county, is this a county seat or? Oh, it's a county seat, isn't it? It's a county seat. So we replace Shane Gross. Replacement for Shane, Shane Gross. Yeah. Will she be on the I, subdivision committee? Uh, that is a question I will have to check in with the chairperson on that. Is the meeting adjourned? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Just want to double check. I wouldn't. Conferring <laughs> with staff. <laughs> <laughs>